Hello YouTube, this is the Plastic Commando coming to you from deep behind enemy lines. Today we're making a continuation video in our series on house rules, specifically for Axis and Allies, World War I, 1914. And uh, the topic for today's video uh, is going to be uh, the use of uh, hospitals as well as ambulances uh, for house rules that um, will be utilized in gameplay as a means of adding uh, a bit more depth uh, to the game itself uh, and uh, hopefully bring uh, a, a bit more, uh, even so slightly balance uh, to the game itself by being able to perhaps uh, save infantry units that otherwise would, you know, would be killed uh, upon the dice roll. Uh, so it could have some benefit either for the untaunt uh, the Allies or uh, the Central Powers um, and again maybe try to change the course of battle ultimately uh, bringing a bit of assistance to either side uh, during gameplay. So um, of course um, anybody that's read anything about World War I knows that uh, it was just uh, a, a crazy slaughterhouse in terms of the uh, types of weaponry that was introduced uh, given the battle tactics of the time and um, uh, estimates of military deaths on, for both sides uh, on the Entente and the Central Powers uh, ranged anywhere from approximately 11 million uh, casualties uh, up to 23 million and uh, the wounded in particular uh, were treated for a variety of different uh, injuries and and uh, upon the battlefield, uh, namely uh, artillery barrage, uh, machine gun fire, poison gas, uh, to name a few. Uh, initially, uh, casualties were treated at dressing stations close to the front lines. Uh, would be their first form of uh, treatment, if you will, um, and then ideally uh, those that could be saved would be taken out of the battlefield. Uh, typically at the time, at the beginning of the war, uh, by horse-drawn wagons, and that was later changed to the use of ambulances, uh, in particular uh, by the introduction um, of the uh, Americans' uh, use of uh, ambulance services. Um, but um, two notable ones that played a prominent role uh, in World War I included the, uh, the American Ambulance Field Service and the American Volunteer Motor Ambulance Corps. Uh, they all began uh, an ambulance driving service uh, in 1914, long before uh, the Americans entered the war. Um, and uh, the primary uh, vehicle uh, was the Ford Model T. Um, it was a truck that was, of course, mass produced uh, in the States, uh, both commercially and privately uh, at that time. And um, the introduction of the, uh, the Model T Ford uh, was integrated directly into the uh, French Army, uh, while the um, uh, the American Volunteer Motor Ambulance Corps itself uh, became affiliated uh, with the what is now the American Red Cross, and uh, they served both uh, with the French and the British. Um, the uh, the use of uh, motorized ambulance services uh, again transported the wounded to uh, hospitals. Uh, which uh, not only improved um, survival rates uh, and uh, overall improvements uh, in outcomes, uh, but also allowed uh, uh, medicines uh, that uh, otherwise could not be used on the battlefield to save lives. So uh, ambulances uh, as well as hospitals played a significant role in World War I. And uh, so as such, uh, we're going to be introducing uh, both of these um, into gameplay as house rules uh, to, um, to again add uh, further depth and variety to the game itself. Um, the, um, as you see on the board before us here, the, uh, am, uh, excuse me, the hospitals, uh, we'll go over these first, they can uh, be utilized uh, on the battlefield in various forms. Of course, what we've got here is um, uh, we've got a large house uh, that has been painted and um, it certainly has the appropriate um, uh, indication of a, a Red Cross uh, signifying a hospital building, which of course is what we're going to be utilizing this for. 
Uh, also, uh, by the way, these these uh, large houses are available through uh, historical board gaming. Um, they're similar to uh, if you any of y'all ever played Monopoly. Uh, they're similar to the uh, the large hotels, uh, maybe just a tad bit bigger. But uh, any event, uh, that's that's essentially what they are. These are the large versions. They're about ninety five cents uh, each on uh, historical board gaming, and they come in a variety of different colors. Um, I think they were out of white at the time, and uh, I uh, in this one here you can see it's uh, it's an Anzac gray color. Um, I purchased gray so I could prime it, and then ultimately uh, uh, sprayed it uh, bright white, and um, uh, decaled it with uh, appropriate uh, uh, red cross symbol. And um, uh, other um, options, if you if you certainly didn't want to go the option of uh, putting a large house on the battlefield itself. Historical Board Gaming also sells these these really neat uh, acrylic markers uh, which uh, signify uh, a hospital and uh, if I get it to focus in a little bit but I would encourage you to go to directly to their website and uh, of course uh, it's got hospital on there as well and these uh, as you notice uh, they're a little bit smaller obviously they lay flat on the game board so it really depends upon uh, which one that uh, that you're interest, interested in using. I myself have ordered a bunch of the uh, markers uh, anyway. Uh, I got these initially, then I decided that, you know what, I'd like to have more of a, a three-dimensional element to the battlefield, so I got the houses. But I actually intend on using both, um, perhaps at different times in the game, primarily because, as you know, some of the provinces that we deal with are... Uh, small some of them are large and so when we get a force uh, together in a province like say for instance we do in Lorraine we may not necessarily have enough room to uh, to put a house uh, to signify a hospital uh, along with other units and, and in that event what uh, uh, what would be another good option would just be to use the uh, flat uh, acrylic marker from uh, historical board gaming simply lay that there and then of course you could stack units on top of that if need be um, so this uh, this gives uh, two two really good varieties to the game uh, in terms of the use of hospitals, and um, uh, just real quick uh, with the uh, the hospital uh, uh, the house uh, that we had uh, talked about the uh, decals that I used on these uh, they are they are really good decals and I wanted to just to, just to briefly show you uh, this is the package of decals that I have uh, used. And we'll be using in all the hospitals as well as those on the ambulances, which uh, which I'll show you just in a second. But these uh, these are really excellent decals. They are from uh, Petting House. Uh, they're made in Germany, so obviously we got really good quality material. Uh, and I'll show you the back here, uh, just so you can get an idea of where they're from. Um, and uh, it's got, of course it's got the instructions on here how to use these. Uh, these are um, these are very strong and durable decals. This is why I like them uh, because um, and I'll go ahead and just show you this little amulet here. This is the French amulet I'm using. Oops. Um, of course, we've got uh, various size decals which I've used on the uh, the Model T. And I'll flip it over to the other side. Uh, you can see here we've got uh, one on the side itself, one on the top. And so uh, this is a, this is a really small ambulance. Of course, uh, Model Ts in real life were not large vehicles either. So, but in any event, uh, the the decals need to be uh, utilized and cut out very carefully. So that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with this particular company, uh, uh, Petting House. Um, I've used these decals in the past before with other models, and they um, they'll need to be uh, trimmed out individually. Uh, as opposed to just say cutting out uh, you know a piece and then letting letting just the marker itself slide off you'll need to trim around each one of these very closely uh, and that that kind of sounds like a pain in the butt but uh, with the the hospital markers you, you might be able to see if I can zoom in a bit they do have the uh, the red cross and there's also the white square background so it gives you a really good line to uh, to either use a sharp exacto knife or uh, delicately with a, uh, a very sharp pair of scissors you can trim that really nicely and it'll come off and um, it apply it applies really well and then after the decal itself has been put on to the uh, 
uh, to the hospital or even ambulances. Uh, what I recommend using is a, a decal solution. Typically what I use is Microsol, uh, Microsol SOL, and that's uh, made by Microscale. It's a, uh, it's a decal softener that once the decal sets for a, a, a bit, uh, go ahead and apply with a brush just straight out of the bottle. Uh, add some of that decal softener to the uh, decal, and it's very helpful in not only uh, uh, allowing your decal to lie flat on a surface uh, that may have some ridges, and if you notice on this, uh, this little um, amulet we've got here, if I can get it to zoom in just a bit. Uh, we've got um, we've got a lot of detail in these amulets, and uh, you can see on the side right there. This this is just an extremely detailed amulet, which I'm going to get into. But because of that, decal solution is really beneficial because it it gets these decals on and it gets them to thin out the decal and adhere to uh, uneven surfaces. And so this is this is a really good option. Uh, these these decals from Petting House. And like I said, they're, they're very durable, so even if you get the decal solution on them, you can maneuver them around a little bit until you get it just in the place you need without the risk of, uh, say, some cheaper decals, which I have seen and used in the past, that if, uh, if you're not careful, once the decal solution is applied, they're really thin, uh, they can start to crinkle up, and before you know it, you've destroyed your decal. But uh, I can tell you from experience, uh, this, uh, this company here, uh, they make some really good decals. Um, they're not cheap, uh, but uh, a pack of these I got off of um, a hobby store on eBay. Actually, I bought two packs of them, but uh, uh, total for two was approximately seventeen dollars. So that you know that's roughly uh, eight dollars and some change for a set of decals. But there's a lot on here that uh, it, it'll really only take one. Uh, pack it to basically uh, utilize everything I need, but uh, but I, I use these for other models as well So I just want to throw that out there in the event if you're looking for some good decals to perhaps make your own uh, hospitals or you know to use in other models um, so uh, Okay, and then uh, just real quick, uh, of course, I've been showing you the little model T Ford uh, which uh, I'll put links up to all, all of the uh, things that I'm using here today there we go. It's coming in just a little bit better. These um, these decals, uh, or excuse me, uh, the Model Ts. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the the other side here, the German uh, Model T. Uh, of course, all of these uh, all of these ho um, hospital ambulances, they're going to be uh, the same Model T that's going to be used throughout the game, whether it be the Central Powers or the Entente. But uh, these. Um, these little Model T Fords, uh, they are available th on shapeways.com and uh, specifically these are sculpted uh, by uh, masters of military. Uh, they're 1 285 scale, so, so it's a pretty good scale for the game itself. Um, these are the World War I Ford Model Ts that um, were produced in 1917, but uh, you know when you look at a lot of um, a lot of historical photos, even uh, going back to say 1914 or 1915, related to ambulance and services. The early Model T Fords, I mean, they're they're all very similar. So, uh, but this this is a good representation to use, and um, so uh, of course we're going to be using those in the game. And of course, uh, one of the more famous uh, ambulance drivers of all in World War One, I, I guess on the American side, was Ernest Hemingway. Uh, the writer, uh, he he gained fame early on as an ambulance driver. So uh, there's a lot of pictures online, which I'm sure you can pull up, of uh, Ernest Hemingway uh, standing beside his uh, Model T Ford ambulance. So that's uh, it's kind of a cool reference. Um, but uh, the the ambulances that uh, come from Masters of Military, they come in a four pack, uh, which is really neat. So you get four uh, on a sprue. Uh, you of course need to carefully cut those off and trim those uh, so you don't damage any of the uh, small pieces on the amulets itself. Uh, but they come in a, a very smooth, fine, detailed plastic, which uh, which of course you you see um, on the video itself as I've showed you. I mean th these are extremely detailed, even down to uh, I think you might be able to see even down to the steering wheel uh, showing inside the uh, cab of the vehicle, which is re just really cool. Uh, but uh, they're a, they're a fine detail plastic. They're nine dollars for four, so that's 
that's a pretty good deal. I ordered, I've ordered quite a few of these. I've got just uh, uh, two or three that I've made up at this point. Of course, two we're going to be showing in the video um, today. Um, and so I, I, that's, uh, that's the background of the pieces that I'm using, where to find those. And again, I'll put the links up uh, in this video uh, where you'll be able to uh, click on and perhaps uh, purchase these uh, these items as well. I, I don't get any kickback. I'm just putting them up for benefit uh, for those that might be interested in uh, uh, using these uh, for their own house rules or other means. So, um, okay, so real quick, uh, the house rules itself, um, the, the hospitals um, will be uh, purchased at a cost of six IPCs. So if you choose to use a hospital, uh, no matter what country you're in, uh, it, it'll cost you six I IPCs to build a hospital. Uh, the uh, ambulances themselves, um, of course, uh, they are motorized. Uh, they'll be able to move around the game board. Uh, they will cost two IPCs. So really cheap uh, to, uh, to purchase the ambulances, but uh, the, uh, the, the small amount that you'll pay for them perhaps uh, could uh, save uh, some infantry and, and uh, produce dividends in the future when you can get those guys back on the battlefield, and in, in, in particular if you're in, in need of much needed infantry. So, um, so the way this is gonna work, the, uh, the hospitals, whether you use the, uh, the large house, uh, which I showed, or the acrylic marker, uh, depending on uh, your style and, and, and amount of room that you've got, um, they uh, will be able to be placed in any mainland theater of war uh, on the map, whether it be Europe, Middle East, or Africa. Uh, that is uh, fully under control by you and not contested at the time of purchase. Um, a hospital can only be placed, uh, for instance, uh, in the United Kingdom uh, if one or more territories are under enemy control. And what I mean by that is, so say for example, um, well, let's just say, for example, the Germans have occupied Yorkshire, okay? Then uh, you, uh, at that point, would be able to uh, purchase, uh, ideally purchase a hospital, place it in London. Um, and the reason that the uh, um, United Kingdom um, could only uh, buy a hospital and place it into the United Kingdom itself um, is because with the... Um, um, with the house rule and the use of ambulance services, um, when an enemy, or excuse me, when, a, um, when you have an infantry casualty that has uh, the option of either going to a hospital or being transported to a hospital via ambulance, they have to move, they have to, move either in a, to an adjacent area or again be transported uh, via ambulance uh, to that hospital. So, for example, uh, the reason I said mainland theaters of war, let's say, for example, the British have some forces here in Picardy, um, and they come under poison gas attack, and there's one infantry that uh, is eligible to be uh, uh, moved out of the, the battlefield. And uh, let's just say uh, there's no hospitals at all in France and the nearby area. Uh, then uh, you could not build a hospital and then transport this infantry unit overseas to that hospital because uh, the reason we want to keep it to mainland services is is ideally if if an infantry unit was to be sent overseas they're typically going to be out of the war so we're going to try to get those into uh, a hospital that is in nearby and also for the most severe casualties being transported to nearby hospitals ideally they wouldn't make it if they got put on a ship and sent overseas uh, to be uh, put then into a hospital so um, so that's why I indicated that uh, with this house rule, it's going to specifically be uh, used for uh, mainland theaters of war uh, only. So um, a hospital cannot be placed in the United States or Canada, uh, again, because each of those are made up of only one territory. Um, and without an adjacent uh, territory for hospital placement and casualties, uh, they again cannot be transported uh, overseas. Uh, so. Um, the um, hospital cannot be built on the islands and in sea zones to include the uh, Balearic Islands, uh, Corsica, also uh, we got another island, uh, Sardinia, Sicily, Madagascar, uh, again for similar reasons, uh, the infantry casualties cannot be transported overseas. Uh, the um, hospital cannot be purchased and placed 
in uh, one of your allied territories. Uh, so, uh, for example, France cannot purchase a hospital on behalf of Italy and uh, build Italy a nice hospital to be used. Uh, you can only purchase, uh, same as you would purchase your own units, uh, can only be purchased and placed in your own territories. Um, but uh, having said that, um, you can place an infantry casualty, if possible, into a near, near, excuse me, a nearby allied hospital. So what I mean by that is, is let's say for example, Italy did purchase their own hospital and they placed it into the territory of Piedmont. Okay. Uh, let's say for example, the, uh, French, they have a, uh, ambulance that is in the uh, province of Lorraine, uh, based on uh, poison gas attack. Uh, for example, uh, we've got one French casualty, um, in that case, if France did not have any nearby hospitals of their own that this uh, injured uh, infantry unit uh, could be transported to for recuperation, uh, given that there is a, a French ambulance uh, in this territory, then the, uh, the unit itself could be then loaded into that ambulance um, uh, at, the, um, um, at the end of combat and then transported via two spaces uh, Burgundy, Piedmont, and then dropped off into the hospital itself. And uh, so that's that's one option. You, you, can't, you can't directly build a hospital yourself into one of your allies' territories, but if your allies do have a hospital and it is not completely maxed out or full, you do have the option of taking one of your infantry casualties and putting it into an allied hospital. Okay, so uh, that's... Uh, that's going to be one aspect that the allies can, if possible, uh, they can utilize their own um, uh, hospitals as well as uh, allied hospitals as well. So um, a hospital can hold at any one time a maximum of five infantry casualties. Uh, a casualty is released from the hospital into the same territory as the hospital itself um, after one round of play. Uh, so basically... One round of play goes by, infantry casualty has been in the hospital, and at that point in time, he's going to be released from the hospital, and then he will then uh, start off in the, um, the territory again where the hospital itself is, which in this case would uh, be Paris. So, so for example, this, this infantry unit, he could have been wounded in Lorraine and been able to have been transported via ambulance uh, to Paris, but once he's out of the hospital, he will then be in Paris, and then we'll have to work his way back to the front, uh, which, uh, you know, again, is a, to me, is a realistic way of what actually happened in uh, theaters of war in Europe anyway. Uh, you know, once these guys were, were taken from the battlefield, they then had to join it, join back up with the unit and then travel back to the front at some point. So um, okay, we'll put this one back here. Uh, lastly, uh, in terms of with the hospital, if, for example, uh, your hospital should fall into enemy hands, um, let's say um, we've got a hospital in Lorraine here, for example. Uh, the Germans come moving in. They take over Lorraine. We've got a hospital. Then that hospital itself um, uh, and any, any uh, patients, casualties that are in the hospital itself, will immediately be taken prisoner and removed from the game. The hospital itself, though, will remain. Uh, any any um, foreign casualties that would be in there, though, would be taken prisoner, and they're they're basically uh, taken out of the game for game purpose. Uh, the hospital uh, in a conquered territory can be used at that point in time by an occupying power. So for, so if Germany takes over Lorraine, there's a hospital already there. Then on their next round, then they can go ahead and start utilizing this hospital as their own. Uh, the the hospitals themselves. Um, once, once they're built, no matter if, uh, someone from the, um, um, from the Entente or the central powers builds their own hospitals, once they're built, uh, they're never destroyed. You can't attack a hospital uh, with this house rule. Um, the hospitals basically, uh, again, they're a mechanism for saving infantry units that uh, otherwise would be lost in battle. Uh, and then once purchased and placed, the hospital can never be destroyed or removed from the game map. And then lastly, um, with the house rule, only one hospital per territory. So, you know, if you so desired, if you wanted to put a hospital in every territory, 
that would be entirely up to you if you had the IPC to do that. But no matter what, only one, uh, one hospital uh, per territory. And um, um, also, uh, uh, one cool thing which I have, uh, pardon me, one thing I have worked out, or am working out rather, back out here just a tad bit, working on uh, what I've called a hospital chart. Uh, this this is not a um, it's not a uh, permanent uh, uh, card, uh, but this is sort of a working card which I'm using. Uh, and you'll see, of course, I've got designated here. Uh, there's a maximum of five infantry casualties that can be placed uh, and held in a hospital at one time. Uh, so that's a reference guide. Uh, then I've got uh, each country that um, is listed on the uh, the battle map including the United States. Of course, as I indicated, the United States cannot uh, build, a, you know, build a hospital because they're not in, considered to be in a mainland theater of war. But what I do have in each one of the, uh, the territories, and uh, I'll kind of kind of zoom into France here. You'll see I've got uh, the names of territories that are eligible to have a hospital built uh, in their uh, territories. And utilized uh, for uh, saving uh, in, uh, wounded infantry. Um, not not every hot, excuse me. Not every territory is on is on the battle chart. And again, for the reasons I indicated earlier, some like uh, for example, uh, we've got uh, uh, we've got the uh, the island of Corsica. Uh, it's not on a mainland battle map. Can't get an ambulance across seas. So again, some some will not be on the actual hospital list itself. But this is a good reference guide that. Uh, you know, hopefully, uh, uh, once I, I fine tune it, I'll print it off on nice cardstock, and um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll certainly introduce this into gameplay as well. Um, one uh, one option that I think that I'll I'll be using, for example, let's just say uh, we're we're talking about, uh, of course, Paris, right? Uh, where we've got a hospital at this point in time. Uh, let's say we've got uh, two infantry that go to to the hospital in Paris. Now, rather than leave those infantry units right on the battle board, or excuse me, the, uh, the game map, because the uh, it can get cluttered up extremely fast during gameplay, what what I thought I would use is, in particular, with the acrylic markers from historical board gaming, is uh, this would be a means of representing the number of patients uh, within a hospital. And of course, uh, what we've got here, uh, we've got, uh, of course, Paris. Uh, we can put. Uh, uh, two unit markers next to Paris, and that, that will signify, uh, since we do have a hospital in the province, uh, or excuse me, the territory where Paris is, uh, it'll show exactly how many uh, casualties are in there. Then on the following rounds, uh, let's say one infantry, uh, he's able to get out of the hospital at that point in time. We just take it away, and then we get down to at some point where we've got zero. So this, uh, I think the use of these little markers, too, will be a good way of uh, keeping straight exactly who um, uh, how many numbers of units uh, uh, that you're going to have in, in particular hospitals uh, throughout the game map. So it'll be a good way of not getting things confused. So uh, so this is uh, this is just sort of a working uh, uh, card that I've, I'm, I'm, I'm using at this time. I'll make some refinements to it, but uh, just wanted to kind of kind of show this to you. Um, it's um, uh, you know, it's a good way to make it up, uh, or excuse me, to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more visual, uh, and it's also very handy, again, in terms of keeping your casualty straight. So, um, okay, what I'd like to do then at this point is um, uh, we're not going to try to keep this video going as long, but uh, what I'd like to do at this stage is essentially just go through maybe just uh, just one or two rounds, and I'll show you the, the different ways that we can utilize uh uh, moving casualties back and forth to hospitals, use of ambulances, and uh, then we'll finish this up as uh, soon as we can. All right, uh, we'll go through uh, just a few scenarios of um, uh, simulated combat and just to demonstrate how the, uh, the house rule of using um, hospitals and ambulances can be used in a variety of different uh, ways depending upon the location on the on the battle uh, the battle map as well as whether or not you would have uh, combined units of hospital and ambulance or uh, simply just a hospital itself. Um, so uh, for the first simulated rule, uh, Germany 
uh, will be attacking from Alsace into Lorraine against the French. Uh, now, um, each have already pre-positioned an ambulance within the territories. Um, uh, uh, one in Alsace, a German ambulance, as well as a, a French ambulance uh, that is already in place, uh, um, anticipating the impending combat uh, that's going to ensue on the Western Front. Um, so in this case, um, Germany has air superiority. Obviously, they have a, a plane in the air. Uh, France does not. Um, Germany is attacking with uh, one artillery unit only, and that artillery unit happens to be a poison gas unit. Um, and again, for those that maybe have not viewed the prior videos uh, that I've put up on the house rules concerning the use of poison gas as well as uh, machine gun units, I would encourage you to take a look at those as well. Uh, but in this instance, uh, Germany will be firing their poison gas first during the attack uh, because uh, uh, it's, it's a long-range uh, uh, artillery unit uh, that will be uh, dispersing the poison gas, uh, whereas the machine gun unit will then fire subsequently at the attacking units. However, short, the machine gun unit is more short-range as, as compared to the artillery unit itself. So in this instance, uh, we will assume uh, Germany has fired its artillery unit because of the um, the air superiority. Uh, they will make a hit on a um, four or less as opposed to a normal three or less hit. And so for purposes of this video, we're going to assume that uh, uh, Germany did make a hit with their poison gas unit. Uh, and then because of that, uh, two French units... Uh, will be selected uh, as uh, potential casualties in this case. Um, and then like the, uh, of course, the other previous videos uh, that I've shown, uh, each unit will have to make a saving roll, if you will. Uh, they'll have to roll each a, uh, uh, a six die. And depending upon the roll, uh, will also, depending upon the result, whether or not the, uh, the gas has no effect as opposed to uh, dying on the battlefield and then potentially being saved by going to a hospital, for instance. So let's assume in this instance that um, the uh, the Germans they rolled a uh, let's just assume they rolled a one, and then also let's assume that they rolled a, a five. Okay, so with the roll of one, uh, there's no effect. Uh, the French unit uh, was able to. Uh, be prepared, um, had uh, respirators on, so there was no impact on the gas itself uh, upon the infantry unit. Uh, the five, though, uh, was impacted, but because the, the French unit did roll a five, then they are in a position uh, at this point in time as defending as a defending enemy casualty that's wounded uh, to be placed into a hospital, uh, either into an adjacent friendly territory or uh, transported via ambulance up to two spaces, uh, to a friendly land territory that is within uh, range. So in this case, uh, what we've got is uh, one unit uh, that uh, will be saved. Uh, there, there again is a pre-positioned ambulance in Lorraine. And so this unit itself uh, will be transported two spaces uh, to Paris. Okay. And then uh, the one French unit uh, will be placed into the hospital. Uh, where he will stay for a period of one round and then be able to be released again back into uh, the city of Paris. And, uh, and of course, uh, as you see off to the side here, I've got my, uh, my hospital chart, uh, which I had shown earlier. Uh, it's got the, uh, the various territories that are eligible to, to have uh, hospital placement and uh, the various uh, uh, cities and provinces within. So in this case, uh, since we've got one French unit in the hospital, um, I guess one, one or two ways that we can simulate this, again, as I've shown earlier, uh, with the hospital markers, if you're not going to use these on the battlefield, these also are very good to uh, indicate uh, the number of casualties. And so we're going to put one here next to Paris. If for some reason uh, you do not have uh, any of the little uh, flat acrylic hospital markers, then uh, you can simply take an infantry unit, uh, corresponding army, and uh, place that on uh, Paris, and there you go. There's the, uh, the infantry casualty that uh, hopefully we'll be recuperating. Now, the one, uh, the one downside to doing this is, as you know, there's just not many infantry units that come in this game. So 
Uh, again, if you've seen previous videos, that's one of the reasons why I recommend uh, adding alternative infantry or simply just buying uh, more infantry units uh, uh, from the game itself, which uh, can easily be purchased at uh, Historical Board Gaming. Uh, and um, that way you'll have plenty of supply of units. Uh, in particular, the British, Germans, uh, French uh, definitely need extra infantry units in this game. Uh, so if you've got an abundance of infantry units, uh, a good way would be to simply just, uh, uh, you know, put the, uh, the French unit there in the hospital. Okay. Now, um, since uh, Germany had made a successful hit, one French unit uh, had it was no effect with a the gas. Then, in turn, since uh, France has a machine gun unit, before the Germans can then continue their attacking roles, the uh, German, or excuse me, the French uh, machine gun unit will fire at the attacking infantry okay so again uh, like the other video and the other scenario um, let's assume that the um, the French machine gun unit uh, made a hit uh, let's say they rolled a three uh, which is a successful hit on a four or less uh, die and because of that uh, two German infantry casualties are going to be selected um, and then they're going to have to each make a saving roll uh, to see whether or not they survive and again, uh, unlike the poison gas, uh, the machine guns are much more um, effective in, in killing infantry units uh, as opposed uh, to how historically poison gas was. So in this case, uh, the defending German infantry units are going to have to roll uh, each a six in order to uh, make a saving roll. Um, as with my house rule, uh, any roll uh, by uh, uh, infantry uh uh, excuse me, uh, infantry casualties in this case, uh, that is a five or less attacking, uh, will be cut down uh, on the battlefield, uh, no chance for a save. So let's assume in this instance uh, we've got two, uh, we've got a roll of, uh, well, we'll say a roll of two from Germany. Uh, this guy is immediately cut down, uh, no chance for a uh, saving roll, uh, or excuse me, a defense, and no chance for a continued attack. But let's assume the other lucky guy uh, rolled a uh, six, okay? Um, this guy is eligible then to uh, be placed into a hospital up to two spaces. And again, uh, the uh, pre-positioned German ambulance uh, is already in place. And so from the uh, territory of Alsace, we could go either uh, through the Ruhr uh, province up to Hanover, or we could go through Munich uh, up into Hanover as well. Either way, this German infantry unit is lucky enough to make it to the hospital uh, to recuperate. Um, and again, like the, um, uh, like the other uh, infantry unit we've got over here, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll place a German infantry unit over here into the uh, province of Hanover. Uh, again, indicating a, an infantry casualty that we'll be recuperating in the hospital. Um, and, and as I indicated earlier, uh, with the battle chart, or excuse me, the hospital chart that I've made up, uh, we've got uh, five infantry units listed here. Only five infantry units at one time can be placed into a hospital. Um, if for some reason that hospital unit is full, no other hospital is accessible via ambulance, or at least uh, by movement, then uh, that infantry unit uh, would uh, perish on the battlefield. Okay, so that's uh, that's one scenario of uh, using prepositioned ambulances to get uh, casualties to hospitals. So uh, what we'll do uh, just uh, as another scenario would show that, uh, for example, we've got uh, let's say for example we've got a uh, uh, we've got a, a an ambulance uh, that is prepositioned here in Burgundy. Uh, maybe it's making its way back. Uh, we've got uh, the same scenario. We end up with uh, casualties on the French side. Um, we'll take this chip and dim uh, simulate that this is a casualty. Then that casualty uh, would have the ability to to move to an adjacent space space to a hospital. Excuse me, but in this instance, with the the ambulance that is um, prepositioned in the in the uh, adjacent space, the Infantry casualty cannot then go to Burgundy, for instance, uh, then get upon an ambulance and then be transported to a hospital, simply because uh, we're, we're assuming in the in the uh, the impact of the uh, the wounds of the battlefield, 
Uh, there are uh, triage stations, obviously, on the battlefield that would uh, stabilize casualties. Uh, but those casualties, we, we can't assume then they're in a position to be transported, uh, you know, essentially marched uh, to another territory, an adjacent territory, only then to be picked up by an ambulance. If they're, if they're being uh, gassed, if they're being uh, uh, shot at um, uh, with, uh, again, in this case, a poison gas artillery unit, we're going to assume that their, uh, uh, their injuries are to the point that they're going to need to be picked up and then they're going to be have to be taken to the hospital. So, so again, a unit cannot then go to a, uh, an existing province and, and get upon an ambulance and, and then get to a hospital. Okay. In other words, it's, it's similar to, uh, like for instance, the use of a transport, uh, where a unit, uh, cannot, um, they, they in essence cannot, uh, make a move before loading onto a transport. In, in this case, uh, an, an enemy infantry casualty, or excuse me, just an infantry casualty, um, they cannot then make a move, um, into, you know, uh, another province and then load upon an ambulance only then to be transported further. Um, so, um, the, uh, in this scenario, the, uh, one infantry, uh, that would not be able to, to make that move, then load, to, uh, to an ambulance, then get to a hospital, uh, would, would die from their wounds upon the battlefield. Okay. Um, in, in another scenario, for example, if, for example, the, uh, let's just say, the hospital was actually in Burgundy, then uh, the uh, certainly the uh, infantry casualty, uh, we'll say there's one French uh, infantry casualty in this scenario, uh, can move up to one space, um, and then that's the end of their move. Uh, certainly they could, uh, they could then be placed uh, into the hospital uh, into one space. Uh, so that, that would be permitted under the house rule, um, and uh, and that's, uh, that's certainly uh, beneficial for one, if you do not have any ambulances on the game board, uh, but you do have an adjacent, uh, hospital. I mean, this could also be in Picardy, for example, uh, and then, uh, an infantry casualty unit from Lorraine could then be uh, moved, uh, one adjacent space directly into the hospital. Um, and so, uh, these scenarios would allow, uh, the placement of, uh, uh casualties without the use, uh, for example, of an ambulance. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the distance between the casualties, uh, will make a difference. Obviously, if you have, uh, you know, multiple hospitals and territories, uh, for example, uh, there, you know, likely would not be any need to uh, purchase, um, you know, additional ambulances, for example. Uh, but, uh, you know, depending upon the IPCs that you're generating, uh, you may not have the ability to build, say, more than one hospital, um, uh, but uh, or just a hospital and an ambulance that will try to ferry casualties to it. Uh, so uh, that would be another scenario: is having the ambulance actually into an adjacent territory, which again the uh, the uh, infantry casualty could then be uh, directly placed into that um, uh, that territory. Uh, but again, uh, just for clarification, I mean, a casualty cannot make a move. And then load upon to uh, a hospital ambulance, uh, similar to like a transport rule. I mean, we're not going to be able to make a move, load, and then continue on. Uh, so, um, one uh, one other scenario, for example, would be, um, and 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 also I, I need a point of clarification earlier. Um, under the uh, scenario where uh, France fired a machine gun, there was two uh, German casualties earlier. Uh, obviously one was cut down on the battlefield, one was saved, and then we went ahead and placed the guy into uh, the uh, hospital in Hanover. Um, actually, under the scenario, what I meant to state uh, for clarification, Germany is attacking uh, with a tank, okay? So when their units were moving into the province of Lorraine and the machine guns fired upon them, with the existing attacking tank, similar to the attacking tank rule that is in the out-of-box rules, um, in that scenario uh, where Germany um, uh, sustained a casualty based on the machine gun unit, 
that casualty actually, because of the uh, tank rule, uh, a hit would have been absorbed by the German tank. So actually in that scenario just earlier, uh, there would have been one unit, uh, one German unit that would have been uh, placed in the hospital. Uh, then there had been one German unit that would have essentially been saved on the battlefield because of the presence of an attacking tank. Uh, of course, as as you know in the, the out-of-box rules, uh, if you do have an attacking tank, uh, and it has to be an attacking tank, not a defending tank, but uh, if you have an attacking tank uh, that's involved in land combat, the attacking tank rule for absorbing uh, hits will apply uh, in this scenario. In other words, for each attacking tank, uh, one die hit is removed. Um, so, so let's say, for example, if you are an attacking unit, uh, you see that your uh, opposing side uh, in the province that you're attacking has a machine gun unit. One way to help thwart the impact of a machine gun would be to load up on tanks, for example. So if you have two or three tanks that would be moving in, your opponent has, uh, let's say, two machine gun units, uh, then you stand a much better chance of absorbing some hits that otherwise would end up into casualties and, and with a machine gun unit, likely immediate death on the battlefield. So, so that is something to consider as well uh, in using, uh, again, some of these combined house rules of uh, machine gun units, uh, you know, also the poison gas, use of hospitals, uh, making sure not to overlook uh, once, once the, uh, the eligibility for tank use uh, comes into play, uh, then that's certainly something to consider if uh, you, again, find yourself into a potential uh, stalemate, uh, perhaps on the Western Front or, you know, even over in the Eastern Front uh, because of uh, machine guns, uh, you know, having very uh, strong defensive positions, then attacking with uh, multiple tanks certainly would be uh, beneficial against machine gun units uh, as well. So um, what other scenario have we not covered? I guess lastly would be that, for example, let's say uh, Germany does not have a hospital of their own, okay? Uh, let's say that uh, their uh, comrades in arms, if you will, uh, the Austro-Hungarians uh, have built a hospital in Ty Tyrolia, all right? And then let's say France has made an attack into Alsace, um, and uh, Germany, um, you know, of course, has a pre-positioned ambulance here in all states. Let's say the French are attacking, okay? Um, the, um, well, in this instance, actually, what we would do, but they're not attacking with a, a machine gun, obviously. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of roll reversal real quick. And uh, let's, uh, let's assume that the uh, French, okay, have the poison gas, and the Germans are in a position, uh, you know, to have a machine gun unit, or, or, or let's just uh, let's just simply say not at all. They don't have a machine gun unit. They've got a regular artillery unit, uh, some infantry, and uh, we'll go with that scenario. Um, okay, the French French are attacking into Alsace. Um, again, they make a uh, successful poison gas hit. Um, you know, of course, Germany has air superiority. But in this instance, uh, let's say France rolls, uh, let's say they roll a one, okay? That's, uh, that's certainly well within the uh, numbers. They make a successful hit. Uh, we uh, select two German casualties uh, like normal. Uh, let's, say, um, let's say both are uh, eligible, for example, uh, for that saving roll. Uh, they roll uh, uh, based on the house rules. Uh, one rolls a five, one rolls a six. Two lucky individuals, okay? Um, and let's say we've got the pre-positioned ambulance, okay? These, these two infantry units uh, can then be placed into the ambulance and transported two spaces, one to Munich, um, and then one over to, to Tyrolia. So as I indicated earlier uh, in the video, um, you cannot purchase a hospital specifically for uh, one of your allies, okay? But in this instance, an allied uh, hospital, though, is accessible to other allies. So, so in essence, the Germans could move their casualties as long as there's space and room in Austro-Hungary's uh, hospital. Their casualties could then be placed in there for a maximum of one round, okay? Um, similar rule would apply, let's say, 
There's uh, their hospital in Austria-Hungary is already full. And these two units, even though that they were lucky enough to hit a five or six save roll, uh, Germany has no hospitals. Uh, they then would uh, perish upon the battlefield because, again, at best, their casualties could be moved to an adjacent territory, but they would not be able to reach, um, you know, the hospital uh, because it's full in, in this scenario. Obviously, they, have, they, have, they would have the ambulance, uh, and if, if the hospital is empty, then they could certainly reach it. If the hospital was full, then they, they would ultimately just perish upon the battlefield because there's no, there's no hospital uh, in the uh, corresponding uh, territories reachable uh, that could treat their wounds. So, uh, so that's um, that's another scenario. I think um, I think that gives us a pretty good indication. I think I've covered all the points that I wanted to make in the use of the house rule. Just a few other things. Obviously, the uh, the ambulances themselves. Um, again, I may indicate it earlier in the video. Uh, they will. Um, uh, their, only, their primary purpose only uh, in the, uh, the house rule is essentially to, to act as a mechanism for transporting infantry casualties on the game map, period. Um, the ambulance has no attack value. Uh, they can never participate in uh, moving uh, infantry for purposes of a movement turn. Uh, they're not able to move healthy infantry forward on the battlefield. So, so I would only add that. Um, and, uh, the, the ambulance again is just primarily for moving casualties. So I think that, um, I think that has covered everything that I wanted to present, uh, in the video. Um, I hope that, uh, I hope that it's been beneficial. I, um, from the many house rules that I'm working on, I, I really do like this because it does give an opportunity to try to save infantry that um, is otherwise significantly impacted because of whether you're using poison gas or uh, more importantly, uh, the uh, machine gun. Uh, if, you, if you are taking two infantry unit casualties at a time, then it's certainly beneficial to have options of being able to save your infantry. Um, and, um, you know, because the the machine guns and, and poison gas certainly is not is not demonstrated whatsoever in the out of box rules of this game. But they played. Um, the, I mean, in particular, just comparing these two, uh, the machine gun just played a substantial role in changing you know the the uh, scope and scale of warfare in World War One, uh, and they caused immense casualties. So that's the reason the differences that I have on uh, the impact of the machine gun causing a significant impact and essentially only having, uh, you know, being able to roll a six die uh, for the, um, the um, you know, the attacking um, infantry to try to save themselves on the battlefield because the machine guns were uh, vicious only second to, again, the impact of artillery. Uh, but of course the poison gas was not as impactful in the war as some had thought it would be. So that's why I've got different scenarios in terms of being able to have, have saving rolls if your infantry units are impacted by opposing poison gas. Uh, and But because these, these are significant, I, I think it's only fitting certainly to have the ability to try to make a save and, you know, again, be able to hopefully make a better defense uh, with uh, the use of these house rules. Um, so, all right, guys. Um, I, I think we've covered everything. I appreciate uh, those that have uh, watched the video. I certainly welcome any questions you've got about the uh, uh, the use of the house rule uh, concerning um, uh, hospitals as well as ambulances. And um, I certainly will entertain those questions and respond accordingly. Um, if you have not already, I encourage each of you to uh, subscribe to the channel. I've got uh, uh, many more plans for videos that will be coming up in the future. And again, just uh, enjoy sharing the love of the game with Access Knowledge community and uh, uh, look forward to uh, getting some additional material put up uh, as soon as I can. This is the Plastic Commando, over and out.